Yo, what's up everybody? It's Dave Brodor, AKA Brilli, and today I'm gonna show you five of my favorite tips for increasing your workflow and productivity inside of Octane. Let's go. This is one of my favorite features, which is the option update check and disabling the camera being updated when it's moved or altered here in the live viewer. So if we keep this checked on, which it is by default, right? Keep that uh, camera checked. Uh, and we move out from the camera, right? We move out from the view. Well, exactly kind of like we thought might happen. Uh, we can move around our scene. However, a lot of times I want to change something within my scene, but I really want to see it through the view of my camera still. So maybe I want to adjust a, a certain light or there's something very specific or particular that I want to change, but I still need to see my whole scene. So what I'll do is I'll go to options, update, check and I'll disable the camera. The amazing thing about this is now I can jump out from my camera and I can actually move around my scene, but my live viewer is still going to be functioning in real time in case I want to come in here and control any aspect. Um, maybe I have another object that I want to place in my scene here, right? So I'll take a, any one of these spheres here. I'll copy that, right? You can see that this will all update in real time and I can kind of position this where I want, but now I'm not locked to being in the view of my camera, but I get to still see the perspective from the camera view itself. Super, super helpful. This has saved me an insane amount of times. The only thing you wanna make sure is that sometimes I forget that if you wanna go back into your camera, you can simply pop back into your camera, no difference there. But if you change anything now in your camera, if you wanna adjust the position or move it around, it's not going to update. Or if you wanna you know, change the post-processing or camera imager or anything like that, your depth of field, you do need to go back in and turn that back on, enable that camera again. And now if you move anything or change anything in your camera, it will work. Otherwise, if you have that disabled, none of this will show up in your live viewer, right? So you have to have that enabled for it to show up. But this is such an amazing time saver to be able to say, you know what, let me pop out for a second, move around in my scene, but I can still see it actively through the camera in the live viewer. All right, now here's for the next part. Inside of Octane, I'm always using the node editor. When you're creating your materials, if you're not comfortable with the node editor, you really should make sure you're comfortable because this by itself will increase your workflow and productivity in Octane and really in creating any materials in 3 at all. But if you want to organize better and you really should try to keep all your textures and materials as organized as possible. All you gotta do is simply drag and select, or you can shift and select individual nodes in here. But if you right click and you say align nodes horizontal, it'll help you align these automatically. So you're not in here trying to very specifically place these. Now this is just the, the first part. What if we were to make a mixed material in here? Have you ever had it where you've created a mixed material? And let's open up this mixed material. And let's add in two different materials here. So we'll have my first bark and the second bark, right? Well, if we open up the node editor, you can see this is just a complete jumbled mess. The easiest way to separate these out is in fact to do it individually. And we'll take a look at my first set of nodes here, right? Which brings us into this bottom right quadrant here. You can see we really have this division of four. Well, what I suggest is bringing this material up into the top left quadrant, closing out of that and going into our second mixed material and doing the same thing here. And bringing this one though to the bottom left quadrant instead. Now, if you open up your mixed material in your nodes, you'll see that these are very carefully now separate it and not over top of each other. Otherwise, when they're over top of each other like this, this is really annoying to try to have to go in and move these all individually, rather instead simply going into your one material at a time and just separating them here. And then that way, when you go into your mixed material, they are good to go. And then lastly, my next favorite productivity tip inside of the node editor here, 
Trying to change the projection or the transform to each one of these nodes can take some considerable amount of time if you do it one by one, right? Each one you have to sit here and plug in individually. However, right, and you put, take the output of that node and put it into the input of that. However, let's delete that. If I want to control all these at once, all I have to do is select the image texture node. I right click and I go to add to selected and I can say transform and we'll automatically add these all to the transform node. I could select them all again, right click and say projection. And now I save myself numerous clips of plugging in each one of those image texture nodes into a transform and a texture projection. And now we're using the render network. So I'm on rndr.x.io. And if you've just uploaded your Orbix file here, that's fine. That's going to work for you. However, if you have a slower internet speed or you just don't want to wait as long, I've got a great tip for you. You can just go to your Orbix file. You can right click it and you can send this file to a compressed zip folder. And when you do that, it will now upload to the render network significantly faster. And it will also, during render time, it will submit out and send to each individual render node faster as well. So your whole entire job and submission process will all increase and get done faster. Who doesn't want to save that kind of time just by simply throwing it in a basic zip folder? And my greatest productivity workflow tip to help speed you up in Octane is using the render network. If you haven't started using the render network, do yourself a favor. You got to jump on. I've got a whole training tutorial for you from beginning to end on how you get started using it. But if you want to talk about increasing your workflow and your speed while you're creating 3D, you've got to be using the render network. Check it out. I'll do the whole entire process along with you on uploading and submit your entire scene from start to finish. So check that out. You won't look back and you won't regret it. Nothing has saved me more time than the render network. Okay, so when rendering out of Octane, we typically will keep our sample count up really high. But when you want to just test out a render, throw this sample count down really low. That's whether you're doing something for your personal projects or for a client. Either way, try this out. Throw your samples down really low and export out an animation. This is really awesome because then you can get and see what your animation is going to look like without having to wait for really long render times. Yes, this is obviously insanely grainy. I use a sample count of 10. However, it renders out at about five, uh, five seconds per frame as opposed to around two minutes per frame at the full resolution. All right, so now what I'm able to do is I'm able to present this to the client and I'm able to get kind of a feedback or sign off. You know, even though it's graining, we can take a look at the animation and get a really strong idea before I go and render that full resolution finalized render that we will be, you know, presenting and submitting for the final here. But this is just a really great way of saving some time and increasing that productivity and workflow. Use low samples for test renders and then jump those up for the final render. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. Hopefully this really helps you speed up your workflow inside of Octane. Until next time, peace.